let's look now at how we can use this parameter here, stamp name. In the earlier version of the for each sop that we were using, each group, the stamp name was being set to the name of the group for each iteration of the for each loop. You can think of this as equivalent to the index variable in a for loop in, say, C or basic. So we have a for loop, for i equals 0 to 10, for example. This is being set to a different value during each iteration of the loop. In this case, where we have a for loop going over each attribute value, this value for value is being set to the value of the attribute for each loop. So in this case, we've got 25 boxes, 25 different values of class. So the first time the for each loop is executed, this will have a value of 0. The next time it will have a value of 1, and so on, right up to 25, the different values of class. Let's demonstrate this by achieving an effect where we have our balcony on a different face of each cube chosen at random. And we can do this by starting with a group geometry SOP. And I'm going to call this chosen face. And again, we will call the group LOS, so it has the same name. And I want to group by expression. And I'm going to use a function of the form $PR equals floor rand times $NPR. The random function, which is not yet complete, we need to put something inside these brackets, will give us a random number between 0 and 1. Dollar $NPR is the number of primitives in the incoming geometry. In this case, it's always going to be 6. So this gives us a round number between 0 and 6, or 0 and 5. Uh, and the floor ensures that that becomes an integer. And then we compare the primitive number of the geometry coming in to this value. And what we should find is that for each, depending on what we put in here, for each cube, this will select just a single face, and it will be a different face each time. So the key thing is what we put in this rand function. And what we want to put is the for value that we have in the for each SOP, which is changing with each iteration and with each cube. If we use for value, this random function will evaluate to a different number for each separate cube, and thus we will get a different face being chosen for each separate cube. And the function we have to put in here is a stamp function. And this has the form stamp, and then we have to say which node, the scope in other words, we're collecting our stamp value from. And in this case, because we're inside the node which sets the stamp value, we put two dots. Then we need the name of the stamp, a variable, which is for value. And then we need to give it a default value, which I'm going to put as 0. And then we probably need to close the brackets. So that should give us, let's enlarge this so we can see the full expression. So the stamp function will give us the value of full value for each iteration of the loop. The random number will thus be different for each iteration of the loop and each cube. It will be between 0 and 5.99. The floor will ensure that it's between 0 and 5 is an integer. And $PR just selects a single face. So let's click this and see what value. At the moment we're getting a value of 1. So chosen face should contain a single primitive. That's true. And we now need to change our blasts so that they select from chosen face in each case. And this should mean that exactly the same thing that we were doing earlier is happening, but it's happening to a face that's being chosen randomly for each cube. Let's have a look at that by moving up. And indeed, we can see that now each cube has a balcony 
on a different face. So for this final version of the For Each SOP, I'm going to start with a new scene. I'm going to lay down a grid. And I'm going to use a clip SOP to chop up the grid. And I'm going to do this multiple times by using a For Each SOP. So let's connect a For Each SOP. Like so. So the final form of the for each SOP is the each number form. And in this case, it's really very like a standard for loop. All it does is execute whatever, whatever's inside this node a set number of times. In this case, by default, uh, 11 times, 1 to 10. Uh, sorry, 10 times, 1 to 9, uh, with an increment of 1. And for each in each iteration, this for value will be set to the current number. So before we go into this demonstration any further, I'm going to reduce our grid down so that it's a single primitive, just to make things simpler. And we're going to use a clip sop to repeatedly chop this primitive into bits. And in this case, the each SOP here is not deleting any geometry. Instead, what it's doing is feeding back into each loop the results of the previous loop. So in the first iteration of the for each SOP, this will give us the geometry that's coming into the for each SOP. We'll then use some nodes to change it. And on the second iteration, it will be this changed geometry that's fed back in, and so on, up to the number of iterations of the loop. So in this case, we're going to use a clip SOP. And what we're going to do is change the direction of the clip SOP randomly in each iteration. And I can do that using a RAND function. And oops, let's enlarge this so that we can see the function more easily. And I'm going to use the stamp that we used earlier. So we're going one level up. That's two dots. We're getting the four value, and we're giving it a default value of zero. So this random function is going to give us a different number between naught and one for each iteration of the loop. Now we want our y direction, in fact, to be zero. And in our z direction, we're going to do the same thing. Stamp. But in this case, we want to add something to this stamp value to ensure that we don't get the same value in both the x and z components. It doesn't matter what we add. It can be any offset value. So I'm just going to choose a random value like so. And what this should mean is that we get different values for direction for each iteration of the loop. And this means that our clip will clip different parts of our object at each iteration. And because we're feeding the geometry back in at each iteration, what we'll get is some geometry, a primitive, clipped into many different fragments. There's one more thing I need to do. We need to keep all primitives. And you can see here on the display we've already got a single iteration shown which is splitting our grid into two parts. Let's go up to see the full effect. And we can see that we're getting a number of different iterations. If we increase this value, we'll get more splits, like so. As we can see at the moment, we're limited to just two parts of the primitive, and that's because we need, in fact, to change these values so that they're valued between minus one and plus one. So we're going to take this random value, multiply it by two, and subtract one, which will give us a value between minus one and plus one. 
and we do the same with this. And if we then go up, we should see that the splits are covering the entire primitive. And we can increase this value so that it produces more splits. So that's the final example of how to use the for each SOP. I hope this has been useful.